this is data and levels of measurement. So data, and we're talking about uh, data being the plural form of the singular word datum. Uh, so we would say that data are correct. The data are on the computer and datum is correct. We have four levels of measurement that uh, we talk about in statistics. So we have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Now, a lot of times that uh, these are from the least precise nominal uh, to the most precise ratio. Um, I used to tell my eighth graders, remember this by no oil in rivers. Um, now, remember this is from the least to the most. Now, if we were talking about the most to the least, we would reverse this. So the first level of measurement is nominal. Uh, we also can call this categorical level. Nominal uh, basically is a naming variable, meaning naming the variable. And, and that comes from the French word for name being nom, the Latin word for name being nomen. Um, the variables that you are examining uh, basically just characterize your observation. So the characteristic is placed in one and only one category. You cannot be categorized as more than one category. Um, all nominal levels of measurement are solely qualitative classification because they are names. Um, because they are qualitative and there is a lack of order or equal intervals, uh, we cannot perform um, arithmetic, which would be addition, subtraction, division, or multiplication. Nor can we perform logical operations, which by saying that something is greater than, less than, or equal to on nominal. Now, on an exam, uh, when I ask you to name the levels of measurement, um, I really want you to use the word nominal, not categorical. Now, here are some examples of nominal. So we might say, you know, what religion are you? Are you Protestant or Catholic? Uh, name the re uh, political party with which you associate yourself. Are you a Republican or a Democrat? Uh, what color of eyes do you have? Blue, brown, green? You notice that all of these, we are only allowing you to choose one one characteristic. Um, also, remember that numbers can be nominal. For example, a lot of times I say football player jersey number. So, Cam Newton uh, with football player jersey number one, while I think he might be one of the greatest uh, football players ever, um, that really doesn't have anything to do with his order. It is simply his jersey number. The number is meaningless beyond simple classification. Now, notice that all of these levels of measurement are names, and so we can't put any of them in a particularly correct order. So one is not higher than the order uh, than the other. Nominal only means that we are putting the respondents into categories, and there is no logical order. So variables such as race and religion are representative and are used to describe people. Now, when we use uh, SPSS, SAS, or STATA, um, we're using a statistical software. And what we want to do is we have to operationalize the variables. And we give them numbers so we can enter them into the statistical software and make the data um, computer readable. So let's look at an example of religion. It really, there is no order. Um, you can be number one could be Jewish, two Catholic, three Protestant. Number one could be Catholic, two could be Protestant, and three could be Jewish. Number one could be Protestant, two could be Jewish, and three could be Catholic. It really does not matter. There is no order in nominal analysis. So what we can say in nominal levels of measurement, we can say each observation belongs in its own category. What we cannot say is an observation represents more or less than another observation. Now, our second level of uh, measurement is ordinal, and ordinal, uh, we actually use categories and orders. So, we put the subjects in rank order from high to low. There is a specific order to the category, 
Um, either it can be the le least to the most of the characteristic being measured or most to the least characteristic being measured. But it doesn't indicate how much higher or lower uh, one subject um, or characteristic is in relation to the other. So ordinal examples, so a lot of times I'll use uh, which kind of pizza do you like best. And so uh, we're ranking the type of pizza according to the consumer preference. Also class rank in high school. You could be first of 300 or 15th of 300 or 299 of 300. But that doesn't mean that I know your GPA from your class ranking. Ordinal common measurement categories. So a lot of times we'll talk about this as far as high, medium, low, weak, moderate, strong, cold, warm, hot, uh, short, medium, tall, lower, middle, upper. And we also have exam grades. So if you make an A, um, it, it is uh, higher than a D, but we don't really know how much higher. And we have no numbers. So an A could be a 90, or an A could be a 100, or it could be a 92, or a 91. So we really have no way of knowing. We just know it's an A. So I can't say someone made an A, uh, and, and they made a higher A than you did. Uh, because in ordinal common measurement, uh, I don't know the number. I only know the letter. Ordinal analysis, so numbers can be assigned to represent ordinal categories. And, and this is the same thing. You know, so for ordinal variables, the numbers do reflect the ordering or ranking of the characteristic being measured from most to least or least to most. So what we can do is one can be short, two can be medium, three can be tall. One can be tall, two can be medium. Notice, medium is always two. Three can be short. Now, what's not okay, though, is to mix it up. So we can't mix it up because it has order. So what we can say in ordinal level of measurement is one observation is ranked above or below another. What I cannot say is the amount that one variable is more or less than the other. So on interval level of measurement, um, this comes from the uh, Latin intervallum, meaning spaces between walls. And interval level variables are ordered, and they have equal spaces between them. And the interval variables are exact measurements. They're standard measurements. But there is no true absolute zero point with interval. There might be a number zero as a variable, but it's not an absolute zero. So let's look at temperature and degrees. So you can have, uh, I've got 60 uh, degrees to minus 30. Now notice that each variable or temperature is exactly 10 degrees separated from the next one. So we're looking at equal distance. There is a zero variable, but it's not an absolute or true zero. Because you can't say there is no temperature at zero degrees Fahrenheit. There still is temperature. And we're not going to talk about theoretical absolutes, which would be the Kelvin scale and zero. Um, we don't use this in behavioral science. With interval data, we can perform logical operations. So we can say one's greater than, less than, or equal to. We can add and subtract, but we cannot multiply or divide. That is very important. And Another extremely important aspect of interval variables is within social and behavioral sciences, we almost never use interval level variables except maybe in calendar years. So interval between the categories 1901, 1903 is the same as 1766 and 1762 seven or 2002 and 2003. So the variable has equal intervals, but there is no zero point because we really don't know when time started. We don't have no in absence of time. Uh, in practical terms, there is no zero point. So time in years is an interval level variable. But what we can say is that one score differs from one another on some measure that has equally appearing intervals. What we cannot say is the amount of it, a difference is an exact representation of differences on the variable being studied. So that would be interval levels of measurement. Now ratio would be the most precise levels of all uh, measurement. And it, it contains all of the characteristics of interval except that it does contain an absolute true zero. Now here is the definition of absolute zero point. Means there is none or an absence of whatever characteristic is being measured. So an absolute zero point, you might want to remember this for an exam, means there is none or an absence of whatever characteristic is being measured.
So, for example, on ratio, um, I can say, I can ask you, uh, how many children do you have? Well, you absolutely can have no children. So, there really is a meaningful zero. We can have a lack of children. Um, also, if we're looking at income, we can have a lack of income. You can have no income. So what we can say on ratio is that one value is twice as much as another or no quantity of that variable can exist. But there's really not much that we cannot say. Now, let's talk about dichotomy. And a dichotomy or a dichotomous variable takes on only two values. So let's look at sex. So we could say, um, and, and this is the way that we would code them also. We could say zero equals male in our coding. 1 equals female, and we claim this is a, ver a ratio level variable because there is an absolute zero. So the above means male is a lack of femaleness. Now we can also reverse that and make female zero, uh, male uh, 1, and we can say that um, female is a lack of maleness.